Hey guys, Rich here. I've got this old portable air compressor and the last couple of times I've used it, it's taken an enormously long time to come up to pressure. In fact, the last time I used it, I think it took a full half hour, no exaggeration, to come up to operating pressure. And I'd still been using it because, you know, you only use like a portable one like this for doing, you know, to trim around a door or finish carpentry work where you're just using a small brad nailer or finish nailer. And even being very slow, it's still better than hauling a big air compressor there. I just recently got this guy for Christmas, and this thing is freaking great. Uh, super, super quiet. It's like one quarter the volume of this one running, even though this one is twice as powerful. Smaller air tank, but higher volume, so still much better performance. I'll link this guy in the description below. If you're looking for a new portable air compressor, this thing is awesome. But that is not what this video is about. This video is about this one, and I've had this for about 20 years. It owes me nothing. But I thought, you know what, now that I have this new one, let me take this one apart and see, see kind of if I figure out why it was operating so poorly. So this is the cylinder and cylinder head up here. So this guy was situated um, in here like this. And then this was held down by four small bolts. And the operation's pretty simple. Uh, there's just one valve. There is a hole right through the piston and this valve, you know, when the piston is going down, uh, lifts up to allow air into the, uh, the cylinder. And then as it goes up, you know, this, this, this valve pushes shut and then forces the air up through the cylinder head and out through the tube into the tank. Now, um, what went wrong? Well, the, you know, the cylinder is incredibly uh, worn. Um, I realize you know, this video might not do it justice, but those, that scoring in there is uh, you know, it's deep enough to catch, uh, to catch like a screwdriver on. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't even need to use my fingernail. I can, I can feel, uh, the difference there. Probably 10 thou easy, um, in this, in this, in this one ridge here and then running my finger along it. Same thing. In fact, let me see if you can, if you can hear that. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, in addition to that, uh, so this is the this is the ring that was on here. The ring was still in place. I think the ring is plastic. Uh, so my guess is the plastic ring just wore down from from friction, and uh, is backed by there's like a rubber O ring inside there that I guess would provide some outward pressure on the uh, on the ring, and it wore to the point where the the piston itself was just you could see the you could see how screwed up that is. The piston itself was just dragging on the inside of the, the cylinder. It's amazing it worked at all, quite frankly. Um, so my first thought was, hey, I could probably just machine a new one of these. You know, it's not worth it. This thing is, I, I don't want to th really throw any time or money into it, but um, it'd be a fun little project. But then I saw the, the piston and I realized there's no way that that was going to happen. Because the, uh, the, the, the ring itself, I mean, I bet you they sell that part and it's probably dirt cheap. Or maybe I could even 3D print one. But anyway, just thought you might find that interesting. The other interesting thing about this compressor, and maybe this is common, I don't know, is I couldn't at first figure out where it was getting air from because I thought, you know what, let me at least take this thing apart and make sure it's not just a clogged up intake filter before this gets chucked in the garbage. Um, and uh, when I took this off, I thought, oh, maybe this is somehow like a filter. Is there like holes through this? But this is a solid piece of plastic and that is just a seal in there, so I'm like, all right, well, where is the air coming from? I grab the flashlight and there are tiny holes that go through to the motor side. So apparently it draws air in from the, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, in from the motor housing somewhere. I'm not even sure where. Uh, yeah, I guess there are some very small holes back there on the other side of the, the motor. I don't think this is, I, th I don't think this motor has brushes, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't see any brush holders on it. I guess they could be inside the can. Um, because my first thought was, oh, is that carbon in there? But I don't know if that's carbon that was sucked through from the, the motor housing or if that's just the, the plastic, uh, mix of, of plastic and aluminum, uh, from the, from the worn ring. But either way, I don't think this is worth fixing. I probably will uh, save the probably save the motor for a future project and save the fittings and and uh, 
and such, but 20 years of use and I, you know, I probably drained this thing maybe five times in its entire life. So I imagine there's a good bit of rust in this tank. It's going in the dumpster, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that. Um, and if you've got one of these compressors and you're ready to call it quits, check out the Senko PC-1010s. Really, really nice. Again, I'll link that down in the description. Thanks, guys.